hi booktube um so this is something you won't see often on my channel i actually even have a disclaimer that says please uh don't contact me about books because i don't accept books for review um but sometimes people ignore that and sometimes i'm very grateful actually it only happened this once <laughs> um so i got an email from the hillary weston um prize for nonfiction from the writers trust um prize in canada and they said, we're willing to uh, send you these five books. Um, and I said, yes. So the shortlist was just announced today. I did take a peek because I was curious. And they said, after the books were announced, I'd get a box. And I got the box today. Um, yeah, I'm super excited about it. Um, so I'm just going to show you. I'm hoping uh, to have all these books read and reviewed in the month of October, the winner. Um, will be announced November 18th, I believe. And so the finalists each get, I believe it was $5,000 just for being on the shortlist. And then um, the winner will get $60,000. So that's a great um, prize, I think. Um, and they're all Canadian authors. Um, so let's get this box open. I'm using scissors, not properly. Let's use them properly. Okay, here we go. Oh look, it's like actual, actual like stuff here. Um, oh, so these are all the social medias of the authors. Um, this has my name and address on it. So on the occasion of the 10th anniversary of the $60,000 Hillary Weston Writers Trust Prize for Nonfiction, we are delighted to share the newly announced shortlist with you. The books nominated for the 2020 prize are explorations of the most important topics of our times, beautifully written with heart and compassion. Our jury poured over stacks and stacks of Canadian nonfiction books to choose these five standouts. Lorna Crozier's memoir delves into the difficulties and joys of creating a life with someone. Stephen Hyten shares his experience on the freight lines on the Syrian refugee crisis. Jessica J. Lee explores how ancestral and geographical forces interlace with their family stories. Tessa McWatt offers a close examination of her own body to ask why we still think in terms of race today. David Neal draws on memories and legends to reconnect with his, I'm going to try and say this, Kwa Kwa Ka Wakak, um, culture after decades of separation. We sincerely hope you'll dive into these wonderful books straight away and share your thoughts on social media using hashtag Western Prize. You're welcome to pass the titles along to loved ones and colleagues to read as well. Our goal is to help these exemplary works of nonfiction find new readers in Canada and beyond. It is a privilege to continue to celebrate Canada's finest works of nonfiction through the prize together with the Writers' Trust of Canada. The winner of the 10th Hillary Wesson's Writers' Trust Prize for Nonfiction will be announced on November 18th via, di via a digital event. Um, and I'll link the Writers' Trust um, social media down below. So, um, red and white tissue paper. How fitting. <laughs> um, let's get into it. This is so cool. I've been on the UPS website all day waiting for this. <laughs> okay. So I already looked them up so I know what they're about. Oh, it's hardcover. Nice. Um, Through the Garden, A Love Story with Cats um, by Lorna Crozier. Um, she is a Canadian writer and um, so is her partner here. Um, and her partner actually got sick and died um, with this mysterious illness. I don't think it had a diagnosis. And it's about them kind of when they, their, their love story, um, and then dealing with this, with this illness. This is of particular interest to me, not because of just cats and the fact that these are writers and they're Canadian, but also because I look after people who are um, sick and ill and need extra help. Um, so have that little connection to there and I love hardcovers. <laughs> um, yeah, and that's, Beautiful. I love the uh, the pink petals on there. Um, and then there's Reaching Myth Mythmana um, by Stephen Hayton, and he spends a month um, at the Syrian refugee camp in Greece um, among the volunteers and refugees of Lesbos. Um, there. Um, so this also sounds really interesting. I I uh, was following that situation. I guess it's still ongoing, but um, when it was big um and initially happening all the refugees coming to uh, greece and uh, i believe it's also italy they were going to then there's this two trees make a forest by jessica j lee and this is her kind of discovering um the history of her family in taiwan um but linking it with the actual like geography and geology of i guess just geography 
of um, the landscape of um, Taiwan. So yeah. Um, this one I am so super interested in. Uh, Shame on Me, An Anatomy of Race and Belonging by Tessa McWatt. And um, I wonder if it says um, here. So she's from Guyana. And so her, um, oh, here it, it says, um, does it? She's multicultural. So, oh, she's Scottish, English, French, Portuguese, Indian, Amerindian, African, and Chinese. Um, and so she's dealing with the question of like, people asking her like, what are you all the time? And so she's examining like her body. She goes through, um, um, now through a close examination of her own body, nose, lips, hair, skin, eyes, uh, bones, and blood. She holds up a mirror to the way culture reads all bodies, asking why we persist in thinking of terms of race when racism is killing us. Um, so that's pretty cool. And there's another nice, oh, oh, look at this. <laughs> so this is like a normal size book. And then we got this big one. Oh, this is cool. And it's illustrated. I didn't know it would be illustrated. There's lots of pictures. I knew it was about art, but I didn't know like it'd be pictures. That's really cool. Okay, so um, The Way Home by David A. Neal. Um, if you're looking this up on Goodreads, it's just David Neal, not the A. I was trying to look it up and couldn't find it that way. Um, so his father um, was a tr traditional... I should have looked up how to pronounce this. I'm sorry. Um, Kwaikatul artist. Um, he returned to the ancestors, triggering a series of events that would separate David from his homeland and its rich cultural traditions for 25 years. Um, and then he uh, sees a potlack mask carved by his great-great-grandfather in a museum in Fort Worth, Texas. Um, and that inspires him to uh, go follow his father's footsteps. And he's a photographer. So that's all the art that we have in here. Um, it's his pieces of photography. Oh, that is that is so cool too. Um, yeah, so I'm really excited to um, get to these. This is also my October TBR, I guess, at this point. Um, so we have The Way Home by David A. Neal. We have Shame on Me by Tessa McWatt. Two Trees Make a Forest by Jessica J. Lee. Reaching Mythmana um, by Stephen Hayton. And Through the Garden, A Love Story with Cats by Lorna Crozier. Um, so that's it. Let me know if you've read any of these books and what you think of them and uh, maybe which one I should start first if this gets uploaded in time before I start one because I might just pick one up and start it now. Um, so that's it. I want to thank um, the Hillary Weston and Writers Trust um, for sending me the, uh, the package. Um, and the books, and having a chance to read some great Canadian nonfiction. Um, that's it. Thank you for watching.